Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Fikri the Gracious bin Muhammad Firdaus William. Today we'll be discussing on a real graphic image version of PAWs and I'll be giving a lecture on that topic. It will consist of projection, positioning, alignment, collimation, exposure factor, markers, aesthetic values, and the name. So we'll start off first with projection. So this is a projection of PAWs. To evaluate whether that projection is PAWs or not, these are the points. First of all, the radial ulnar articulation must be open. And based on what, I read, what I've written here, this is the radial ulnar articulation. Next, radial and ulnar slide seen at the extreme lateral and medial edges of each bone. This is the radial styloid. This is the ulnar styloid. It must include a quarter of distal radius and ulnar, a quarter, and half of proximal metacarpals. Second, uh, next, next. Second to fifth carpal metacarpal joint spaces are open. Okay. Positioning for a true PA wrist. The carpal bones and metacarpal bases are not superimposed to each other. The carpal bones and the metacarpal bases are not superimposed to each other. Presence of superimposed carpal bones knee, these carpal bones and metacarpal bones will let us know that there are rotation. Uh, nextly, no distortion of scaphoid. This is the scaphoid. There's no distortion of the scaphoid. Presence of distortion identifies presence of extension or flexion of the hand. These are examples of positioning that has rotation. Okay, start off by internal rotation. When internal rotation occurs... Now, if you're talking about internal rotation, carpal bones and metacarpal bases located on the lateral aspect of wrist are superimposed. So, based on the anatomical position, our thumb is in the lateral aspect. So, during internal rotation, the lateral aspect will be superimposed. The metacarpal bases and the carpal bones of the lateral aspect are superimposed. Okay, next on with the external rotation, carpal bones and metacarpal bases located on the medial aspect of wrist are superimposed. Yet again, based on the anatomical position, the pinky side or the fifth metacarpal side is the medial aspect as your hand is like this during the uh, anatomical position so this is the medial aspect so during external rotation your medial aspect of the wrist where the carpal bones at the metacarpal bases will be superimposed right here in that image where else if extension occurs the scaphoid will be elongated okay for the explanation so as you can see, if you're viewing, okay, you from PA view, you're viewing it from above. Okay, this is your view from the top. So this is flexion, flexion of the wrist. This is the scaffold here. From the top, this is the only thing that you will be viewing. This part right here, this small thing. So it will be viewed as for shortened. As if you look from the top, this is the only thing that you're viewing. It's short. Where else if the wrist is in extension and you bring it from the top you will see this this part right here so from that you can conclude that from PA view you will find that the scaphoid is elongated elongated during extension and foreshortened during wrist flexion so, okay, I'll give you some time to look at this image see this is the top view okay you can clearly see that this is shorter than this image this is a scaphoid and this is the scaphoid, the one with the sharp thing down here. Okay, that is the scaphoid. Okay, next slide. So this is the evaluate. This is my image, and I'm going to evaluate that image. So first of all, you must evaluate whether carpal bones and metacarpal bases are superimposed or not. And from this image, there are no superimposition of carpal bones and metacarpal bases. Therefore, there are no sign of rotation in this image. Next, scaphoid is not foreshortened or elongated in this image. This is a scaphoid here. Okay, so there are no signs of flexion or extension in this image. Okay, and now we'll continue on with the alignment. For alignment x-ray tube with patient, you can't determine that alignment as the as due to the absence of collimation. Nextly, x-ray tube with cassette. X-ray tube with cassette can't be determined due to the absence of collimation too. 
alignment between cassette and patient is incorrect because the distance between the central structure at superior level is more than inferior. So I've cross-centered the marking at, at the middle here. You can evaluate that the superior part is more than the inferior part, whereas the left and right are equal to each other. The centering point for this radiograph is undetermined due to the absence of collimation, but the actual standard centering point is perpendicular to mid carpal collimation. At the superior side, you must include half of proximal metacarpal and MCP joints. At the inferior side, you must include the radius, the ulna, and the ulna styloid. For the right side, you must have the fifth metacarpal, fifth MCP joint, you have the ulna styloid. Where else at the left side, you must have the first metacarpal, first MCP joint, and the radial styloid. This is the radial styloid. Exposure factor. So for exposure factor for wrist, thin structure for BCO or bony corticular outline, which affects the contrast, for thin, we'll be using bony corticular outline of the ulna styloid and the thick will be using bony corticular outline of distal and radius. So ulna styloid is located here and you can see it. BCO of distal and radius. This is the distal and radius, distal and radius. And you can see it. So assumption that it is adequate and action taken are no changes required. Next is the NCP, which is affected by the bony trabecular pattern. Thin structure, same on our style line and thick structure is also the same as the above distal line radius you can see the trabecular pattern of the on our style line and the trabecular pattern of the distal and radius and to conclude the density is adequate and no changes are required for this image marker anatomical marker is present in the graph placement and annotation of marker is correct anatomical marker does not obscure region of interest so this is the anatomical marker as you can see that it is placed properly at the right side and it does not overlap the region of interest or the anatomical part being radiographed. Okay. Aesthetic value. Size of cassette used is the optimal size which is 18 times 24 cm which is sufficient to retrieve information required from the projection. And as you can see from this image, there are no sign of artifact in this image taken. Okay. And next, we'll go on with the name. The last one. For conclusion, patients and information regarding to the name, IC number, or examination date, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. As you can see, usually it is placed down here for the name or any information, etc., during this radiograph. My suggestion would be that the name to be placed down here, not overlapping the region of interest. Conclusion, the radiograph positioning is correct. The alignment is susceptible even though there is no collimation. As you can still see the region of interest because it is not obscured or cut off in any form of V. The exposure factor is sufficient. Anatomical marker is clear, present and placed pro properly. There is no form of artifact on the radiograph. But patient's identification is absent on the radiograph. Therefore, this radiograph is unacceptable as you can't identify that Whose radiograph is that for? You cannot identify which patient is it. So therefore, it is unacceptable. This is my references that I used throughout this presentation. Okay, thank you for your time and assalamualaikum.